Welcome to my channel. I'm getting ready to do my five requested reactions today. But before I do that, I wanted to share something with you. Uh, this is a, a video that I found the other day and I've watched it a couple times. And it blessed me so much that I wanted to share it with you. Uh, the title of the, of the video is One Minute with God by Keith Ellis. Uh, Keith Ellis is a man who has a ministry of healing and he has uh, performed some amazing miracles. Well, God performed them, but uh, he was instrumental in it. And uh, this, in this video, he tells his story of how he was called by God and then uh, how he turned his life around and became dedicated to the ministry. Uh, I've, I've been th thinking a lot about my channel lately and, and what I've been doing and I've been doing uh, daily news clips every day. And those have been popular with a handful of people but not really very many. And um, as I think about it, I think why am I sharing the news with you? It's mostly negative anyway, and you're probably already aware of much of it. So uh, how am I adding any value to your life? And so I've decided that I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you what I call uh, blessings. I don't know if I'll do these every day, but I will do them from time to time. And this is one of them. And I hope that this video impacts you powerfully, especially if you're a Christian. And I'm going to talk about it after it's done. It's 14 minutes, so it's not short. And before we get into that, thank you for coming to my channel. I do appreciate it. I really do. So, let's watch this One Minute with God by Keith Ellis. And his grandmother takes him to a meeting and an evangelist, lay, as he's a baby, lays hands on him. Jesus, and what did he prophesy? He prophesied that I'd be used in the end times for revival, that I would see uh, great things come to pass when I prayed for people. And uh, that led to, as I grew older, to begin to have the dreams. And what did, were your dreams about? My dreams were always the same dream every time I was in uh, great crowds of people. They were reaching out to me, many of them at many stadiums, and they were reaching out for healing, and deliverance, and salvation. And God was uh, touching them instantly. And I would wake up, you know, crying, and my grandma would say, That's not for now. Remember the prophecy, it's for the end times. We're in the end times. So it is now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, your son, out of nowhere, six years old, Justin, yeah. has bacterial spinal meningitis, no brain activity. I checked with my personal physician and I said, doctor, if a six-year-old has this bacterial spinal meningitis uh, with no brain activity, uh, what is the chance of him surviving? He says, none. But if a miracle were to happen, he'd survive, but he'd have his, he wouldn't have his brain. Mm. That's what he said. What happened to your son? Tell me. Well, uh, when Justin rolled out of the bed on Halloween night, he uh, had been to school that day and got a fever and was taken to the doctor and came home. And just in the middle of the night, he rolled out of the bed. I heard him hit the floor, picked him up, carried him to the hospital. They sent him to two more that night. He was in a fetal position. He couldn't see, walk, talk, hear. Do nothing. He was having convulsions. We took him. He ended up in ICU. They called in the greatest minds in the world. And they said that the bacterial spinal meningitis had caused him now to have no brain waves and that everybody that had been in contact with him had to be treated medically, including me and my wife. It was so contagious. It was the very, bacteria. and people were dying huh. from this thing. And they said that we, we don't give him any chance, zero. And, you know, many days passed by and it was that way. And so, uh, I'm sitting in the hospital and when all the doctors gave up said, 
every one of them gave up and said that we, there's just nothing else to do. We've unplugged him from the, the breathing machine, the ventilator. There's no brain waves. There's no movement. There's no change after many days. I told my wife, I said, as she sat in that glass room, I said, I'm going home. I've got to be alone. And I went home that night and I was sitting in the bedroom. I was crying. I said, God, why? You weren't the only one crying. You yeah. told me that all the staff there was Everybody crying. was crying. It yeah. was such a cute little six-year-old boy. And that we're all crying and crying. And I'm crying. I said, God, you know, uh, why did you allow this? I mean, why did you do this? And God said, you know, in my spirit, I heard, I didn't do this. The enemy attacked your child. And you, you need to get, you need to get, right with me and I began to cry out in repentance and when I did all of a sudden the room lit up like 10 billion light bulbs and Jesus was right in front of me <laughs> right in front of me and, and the thing that was so ex the thing that was I, I thought you know if you, Jesus ever appeared you just talked to him you can't move the power was so strong I was, I was wide awake and this glory is hitting me and it's like this light is so bright you can't hardly see I mean I'm trying to see him and I thought what's he going to do I couldn't move he says go to church and, and then I saw this love coming out of his eyes well he's gone one minute he was only with me one minute, 60 supernatural seconds. He gave me an instruction. What do you think I did? I jumped up, got in the car, ran out of the driveway, went down. I was going to my church that I had left, you know, a year ago. It was an hour away, but you know what? As I turned the corner, there was a little church on the corner, and there was a man standing there trying to lock the door. It wouldn't lock. He lived in another city. His coat was blowing in the wind. I pulled in and said, can I use your church? He says, who are you? And I said, my son is critically ill. He's at the point of death. I said, no hope. And he said, well, I'd have done been gone, but this door won't lock. And so he said, go ahead. I went down, got on my knees, repented before God. The Lord spoke to me and said, Justin is healed. He will be named the miracle boy of the hospital. And you will go out and pray for the sick. And I took off. He said, go, you got to go and prophesy this now. Tell them people. So wait, I, wait a second. Now, <laughs> the staff's crying. <laughs> There's no brain waves going on. And he's supposed to go in the hospital and say, my son's a miracle boy. He's going to get up and walk out. Yes. He gets back to the hospital. You know what the, the staff thought about him? They wanted to give him a sedative. <laughs> they thought he was a little mishuga, crazy. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Well, you know, as I, I came back out of the church, I had the instruction now. I knew what to do. It was up to me now. The Lord's has appeared to me. Sure enough, I ran in there, and the staff sees me come in there thinking, you know, they think I'm, you know, upset, which I, I'm upset in a different way. I'm upset that I'm going to be able to tell everybody in the world that Jesus is the healer, yes. that Jesus is the miracle worker, you know? And so... And you know, Sid, I only got one minute with Jesus appearing to me. That only takes one minute with God, 60 yeah. supernatural seconds. So I had this minute, I, I followed the instructions, I told the staff, and they said, calm down, calm down, you might need a sedative. The, you, you've been through so much. My wife's in there, I turned around, I said, he's going to be the miracle boy. She had him by the hand. She, there was no change whatsoever. But she said, you know what, the Lord spoke that to me while you were gone, that you were going to have an encounter. And I had said, well, you know what? We called all the doctors in. I told them exactly what had happened, that the Lord had appeared to me. He would be known the miracle boy. And they said, you know, for your sake, we hope he is. That would be awesome. And But, you know, right now, you know, it's really bad. I mean, it's about one of the worst we've ever seen. But you know what? The next day while they were... So is he getting better? No, he got worse. He went downhill. <laughs> Oh my goodness. He got worse at, for, after my big word. Things got worse overnight. Got, he started having convulsions and he, he's in this fiddle position and things got worse and worse. And so the next day, more doctors come. There's a whole team in there. And this one doctor, the head, walks in there. He said, You know, I, I'm sorry. You know, there, it's just, this is really, he's almost gone. And he walks in there and I, he I heard him drop his clipboard. My son is sitting up in the bed. <laughs> What, what did they think about that? They were like, oh my God. Yeah, they got it right anyway. Yeah, they were like, oh my God. Well, you, he, you know, he's set up in the bed. We, we didn't do anything. I said, God did. Yeah.
Now, I, I, I have to ask Keith this. This was many years ago. Uh, today, uh, is there any evidence of the brain damage or bad health? Tell me about your son. Okay, let me tell you quickly. He didn't, he didn't have to go through rehabilitation, no rehab, and that's good stuff. That, the moment he got up, from that point on, he was out of the hospital within a day. <laughs> He got out of there, Sid. And what happened was, they said, before he goes home, we want to check his IQ, because his brain was dead. See, his IQ. When they finished testing that kid, he had the brain of a genius. I'll tell you what, when God heals, he really heals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One minute with God. To, but today, he has how many degrees and how's his health? Oh, today he's got several degrees and he's got two big degrees. He works for a major university. He teaches at the universities at, at times too. And he works there and his health is outstanding. He just had a total physical. He's uh, fixing to turn 41 years old coming up. This, this miracle happened 35 years ago. He's about to turn. That miracle has held. He doesn't have high cholesterol. He doesn't have high blood pressure. They can't and find nothing wrong, not even a cavity in his teeth. Oh my goodness. Now, just out of curiosity, when, when he got up, how about the other people in the hospital? What effect did it the have? The glory came when he got up. The same glory that that minute I had with God, the residue of that glory came on me. I, I was always so shy I couldn't even hardly look up. But when that glory comes on me, it changes you into another man or woman. And what happened was that residue that I had gotten back there in the house, in, in the church, the two, two places I met with Jesus, that residue came into that room. And it was thick. And people would come to the door to walk in, staff, friends, family, preachers. I mean, we had a hundred people there at one time. They would step in and they couldn't stand it. It was so strong, they would repent right there. The glory <laughs> stayed in that room. As long as he was in the room, the glory was there. In fact, when he left that hospital, the doctors came and some of them said, we want to hug him, we want to kiss him, because we never want to forget that God is a miracle working God. What about cancer? Have you seen many people with cancer healed? Tell me one. Okay. I, I, I've seen many people with cancer healed. We just had a, a lady that that uh, came to one of our meetings and she had stage four cancer. She could not eat at all. She was just like a rail. I even, you know, I mean, it's, it was the most amazing thing. She came to me and said that somebody told me you had prayed for people and the tumors would fall off and stuff like that and cancers were healed. And I said, yeah, that happens. Have you been to the doctor? She said, yes, it's diagnosed as stage four lung cancer. So we prayed for that in the service. I said, come several times because at the first time I didn't know, I mean, I wasn't sure that she, you know, that she understood completely. But she came. She did exactly what I told her. I said, you're going to get your minute with God. She kept coming. She came several services. One night she goes, I got it. I felt something come out uh, on me. It, it was like it was around you and it came on me. She just went back to the doctor, just came and seen us lately at our church. She stood up with her daughter from New York. This is my daughter. And what is your prognosis? I went to the doctor. No trace of cancer. No uh, what about a, a blind person? Tell me one story. Okay. Let me give you this. Yeah, I've seen many blind people heal, many blind. There was a lady who came to our church recently. With, she had a cane. She was walking with a cane, How and she had these dark on? glasses on. She asked me to pray for her, and I did. I said, what do you want me to pray for? And she asked me to pray for something besides blindness. So she came again, and she came again. And then one night I said, tonight blind people are being healed. She was sitting down there. She didn't even, I never even went down and laid my hands around. I don't have to do that. I, I have a word. You know, God just gives me the word. I just say the word. And so I said, blind people are being healed. She, all of a sudden I looked, and she took off the dark glasses. I, I can see. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, this one minute with God, where did it come from? The one minute with God came, well, of course, from Justin, my son, that minute right. God gave me. I, I hadn't really thought about it a lot, but not long ago, I, was, I came in from doing a meeting. I was really tired, prayed for a lot of people. I, I laid down in my recliner, leaned back, and fell off to sleep. All of a sudden, I woke up and I saw the picture of a stopwatch, and it, was, it went from zero to 60 seconds, and the Lord said to me, 
He said, my people can have what you had that night. I said, what was that, Lord? He said, one minute with God. Sixty supernatural seconds that can change their life forever. And he said, I want you to begin to teach that. I want you to begin to tell that. And I began telling it, and it started happening. That I would look at people and say, your pain will be gone in one minute. Or then they would go out, and they would tell somebody they loved, and all of a sudden they'd get healed. And we started getting reports from all over that one minute with God could change somebody's life forever. People started going back to the doctor, the reports began to change. Something was there before, it wasn't there now. That's God. One minute with God. I want you to teach a couple of nuggets of how can I have one minute with God in His presence? How can the viewers have this? You know, it said the thing that thrilled me about God is even when I was away from God, I had left the Lord. You know, I think God will give anybody a minute. Yes. Amen. You know that? You know, I think He will. I think He'll give. And He came to me when I was away from Him. And He appeared to me. I, I was just crying out, Lord, help us. We don't know what else to do. Lord, help. And I knew I wasn't right. But just like that prodigal son came to the father, I went to the father. And I said, Father, help us. And you know what? God gave me that one minute. Jesus appeared to me, and it has changed my life forever. And I, I found this secret out about God. If you'll spend that quality, quiet time with him and listen and look and hear, if you'll read the word, if you'll stay close to him and get under some anointed teaching, they're getting that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And they'll begin to feel that residue that came upon me. And it, it's on this set with me and you right now. Well, Steph. the set is here. I believe that you should pray right now for people to have the impartation yes. of one minute with God. Would you do that? Yeah, I want to say to everybody that's watching now, you've been hungry, you've been thirsty. And you know what the enemy will do? He'll tell you that you know, you're not qualified to get that one minute with God. Because he is the father of lies. And he'll say that. And I want to tell you this right now. That I learned something from God during that encounter, that Vision, that David went down and when Goliath had held Israel captive for 40 days and 40 nights with his mouth and he was a type of the enemy, David went down and he said, this day God will deliver you into my hand. And what he was doing, God told me, he said, did you notice something there? He said he never gave him a chance to say anything again. David had the final word. And I want to say today that the final word is some of you are about to get the greatest miracle, the greatest breakthrough, the greatest financial turnaround that you've ever had in your life. So I release an impartation. I release an anointing right now. Shut your hands towards me. I release that power of God right now, that residue that came on me to break the yoke, to break the bondage, and to give you that one minute with God. It might come tonight. It might come next week. It might come in a month. But you get your one minute with God, and don't be denied. And when you hear that voice saying you can't have it, you do like David. You have the final word. And you say, God, is going to give that to me in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. All over the earth. Very powerful stuff. <clears throat> You know, the Bible says that we were healed, were healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. When he was beaten and when he was flogged, he took on our sickness. Yes, he died to save us from sin and he took on our sins on the cross, but he took on our illnesses when he was being beaten when he was being scourged. The problem with us is we don't believe it. We don't, we, we think we're not good enough to receive it. It's my prayer for you, for every single person that's watching this, that you will get your one minute with God and that the result of that one minute will be healing whatever ails you doesn't matter if it's what she say it was fourth I can't remember the word for cancer fourth stage four cancer doesn't matter God can heal anything he can heal a boy who is brain dead he can heal you 
and it's my prayer that you will get your one minute and that it will change your life. And I pray that same thing for every single person that loves you. I pray that they too will get their one minute and that one minute will change their life. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet, out.